hello everyone and welcome to my youtube channel this is part four of the competition days and today i'm going to tell you how to do hyperparameter tuning for your model using optuna i have made one more video about hyperparameter tuning if you want to take a look at different approaches you can take a look at that video that is a much longer video this is going to be a shorter one and it's only going to cover this competition and optuna and not other frameworks so optuna is a hyperparameter optimization framework um, and it's very simple to use so uh, if you look at if you look at the xgboost example here it you have to define an objective function that you want to optimize and you have to then just create a new study and uh, tell which direction you want to optimize in like if you if you want to maximize your objective function or minimize the ob objective function and here you can specify the number of trials you want so without going into too much details of how everything works here you can uh, we, we, we will just start with some some simple code and then we will see if it's able to optimize our hyperparameters or not so i will import the same old things that i have imported in previous videos so let me just copy paste a few things really very quickly so i have pandas numpy scikit-learn so you already know the data and um, we will just take the data and put it here so now our data set has a few things so one, one of the things that we have is the target encoding so this was from the previous video um, so you have the data frame you have the test data frame um, here I'm using train folds a lot of people ask me they are not able to find this file so just look for this string click on add data here and search for 30 days folds and you will see the author name author name is me and you can directly use it or you, there is also a notebook in which i have created this file okay and this is just target encoding we have the same old data set and that's it so okay now i'm not able to find because i have not added this data so let me just quickly add it uh, so click on add data search data set 30 days folds and here i have 30 days folds and i also have 10 folds if you want to use 10 folds but we will be using 5 folds okay uh, we added the data we will do all the processing and in the meantime we will also add um, our training loop the one that we have been using for a long time now and this is your this is the training loop we have we have been using it for a long long time now so we have the train data set we have the valid we have test data set we extract the useful features we have ordinal encoder we process our data set using ordinal encoder and we have the xgboost regressor now when we have all these uh, we can uh yeah so this is also something that we have already done early stopping rounds and evaluation using uh, early stopping rounds so we have the pr predictions for validation set test set final prediction and we append all the scores to um final prediction sorry the scores and we append predictions to the final predictions so now this this is something that we have been using a, for a long time now so what we are going to do is we are going to take this and indent it and convert this into a function let's call this function run you can call it anything you want and run accepts a variable called argument called trial okay so now you have the run function that accepts trial and in the end what it, what it is doing is it's returning the mean of the rmse scores that you have obtained np dot mean of uh, scores so now when we looked at the optuna example we saw that it expects um sorry when we looked at the optuna example we see that it ex expects an objective function that is our run function now and it expects uh these two simple lines of code which is uh just to create the study and it creates a trials on its own so i will import optuna here and now uh, since i have this objective function that is so what's happening here what is happening is calculating the rmsc score on validation set for five folds and just returning uh, returning that uh, returning the mean of that 
So we don't need test spreads here. We don't need this. So you can, if you want, you can just remove this. Okay, so we have the valid predictions. We append the RMSE. We don't need the final predictions. We are just calculating everything over our training and validation set. We don't need the test set right now. So let's just remove all instances of test. It will make our code a little bit faster. Uh, and now we have um, we have to create the study. So optuna.create study and uh, optuna study.optimize. Instead of objective, we have run. Okay. And here I think you have the direction. So direction will be minimize. We want to minimize our RMSE score and uh, you can also print the best parameters in the end. So let's take this part here and let's paste it here. So now it's doing a lot of things. Just remember to be sure that uh, you're using it on GPU. Otherwise it's really very slow and you're not going to wait. I'm just going to fix a seed for everything. So I'm not going to say which fold is what, just fix seed for everything. Okay, so now we will be training this for five folds, generating the best parameters, but how do we generate the best parameters? So if you Google Optuna Pythonic search space, you will come to this page where you can see how you can suggest uh, variables uh, that needs optimization. So like uh, you, if you want to select optimizer which can be either momentum sgd or adam so you do trial dot suggest categorical similarly you have trial dot suggest int trial dot suggest float okay so i've been i've been playing around uh, with this a bit and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a few things here so i'm going to add learning rate so you can see like these are the parameters for xgboost that i have just added so Let's see what we have. We have learning rate, which is a float, and with the same name, learning rate, I specify a range, and specify log equal to true. So learning rate can be 0 0.001 to 0 0.25. Then I have uh, lambda regularization, so I suggest log uniform. So it totally depends on you, what you want to suggest. And uh, same for alpha, log uniform, subsample, I suggest a float value from 0.1 to 1.0. Call sample by tree, 0.1 to 1.0. Max depth between one and seven. So I have all these values here, and now I have to use them. So to use them, I can just add them here. But one thing you notice that I haven't added is number of estimators. So keep the estimators low if you want the results faster. Keep them high. It's going to take time, but it's uh, not going to give you very good results anyways. So better just keep at a low number like 7,000, 10,000, 15,000, things like that. And I'm using GPU. Now it's time for us to run this, but we are running it for five poles. Are five poles really necessary to optimize our hyperparameters? Maybe no. Maybe it's, it's a good thing to do, but uh, in our case, Five poles means uh, five times the time to fit one model and we have a lot of data. So what we can do is we can just optimize on one fold. And to do that, what you can do is take all this and instead of for fold in range five, make fold equal to zero. Everything remains the same and just return RMSE. So now you are calculating only for fold zero. Okay, so now let's run this, but we also need GPU. So let me turn the GPU on. And now we run it. So we come here and here instead of 100 trials, we can just do five just for this video. But if you do thousands of trials, it's just going to take you more time and uh, it will probably give you much better result. So now it starts the new uh, study and see how fast it is. One more thing specific to this competition that I have noticed is uh, the GPU method, GPU hist, 
is very fast, but it's not giving result as good as CPU. So just tune your parameters on GPU and then use the same parameters to generate predictions, the final predictions, but on CPU. And you, uh, you will probably get much better results. So now here, see, it says trial zero finish with the score 0 0.726 and trial one 0 0.726. So uh, till now we don't have any improvement. Now we got some improvement 0 0.720. So now best is trial two. Uh, this is not good, but here it says the best trial is trial two again, and it, it will do it five times since we had only five trials. So you can have 500, 5,000 trials. Just let it run overnight on your local machine or just use Kaggle for, uh, I think the kernels are allowed for at least uh, up to nine hours when you save the version. Okay. So now all trials are finished. And if I do study the best params, it's giving me the best parameters. Now, when I have to use it, I will just use my same old board, but with these new learning rates. And I will also publish a kernel that I, um, that has been, um, uh, that has been using the new parameters, the parameters, so this is about Optuna, uh, and it's giving quite good score. So you will see the single models also perform very, really, very well. Just by doing hyperparameter optimization, we haven't done much. So this is the same old thing. You just imported Optuna. This is new. Uh, this is the same old thing with target encoding. This is kind of the same. We didn't change much. We just added these lines to suggest uh, different values for different arguments. And this is where the magic happens, right? And uh, we use the same things here. We specify a number of estimators and uh, uh, now, now, so one more thing to remember, we specified 42 as random state here. So when you're using these parameters, remember to use the same random, random state. Otherwise you're going to get different results. And we created the study and uh, we run the optimization function for five times. And that's it. That's your Optuna hyperparameter optimization. Let's save the version. So here is our saved version and you can see it's already 0 0.001 improvement. So it depends on the trials. Um, so take a look at Optuna. It's a very good library for hyperparameter optimization. Take a look at its documentation, how it works. Uh, you can also take a look at my other video, which is much longer version of hyperparameter optimization in which I go through many different libraries for hyperparameter optimization. And uh, with this, I would like to end today's video. I hope you liked it. And if you liked it, do click on the like button, do subscribe, tell your friends about it and see you in the next one. Bye.